Hi, it's Mike Thornton here from Pro Tools Expert, and today I want to show you the Liquid Sonics Reverberate, which is a convolution reverb plugin. But to say that undersells it big time. So often convolution reverb plugins are little more than an impulse response player, where you load the impulse response and you get a reverb. There may be some small tweaks or adjustments available, but that's usually it. But Liquid Sonics Reverberate is not one of those plugins. And in fact, I'd go as far as to say, in many respects, it's a convolution algorithmic hybrid with loads of controls and options that you'll find as you go digging. But let's start with the basics. We can click to show the file browser and this will default to the first of two folders of impulse responses that come with the Reverberate plugin from Liquid Sonics. So you can see here we've got a selection of different impulse responses and all we need to do is to click on one and then we can play the audio. At Soho, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second uh, film centre of the UK. We can go around. Shepparton and then in the middle of London, in an old district of London. You can see that we've got we a basic idea of the length. Streets, and most of them are in buildings uh, that are uh, higgledy piggledy. They've got all sorts of walls in the way. And often their suites are over four or five different floors, different levels in the buildings. So uh, they, and obviously they're, they're, they're renting these buildings, so they don't want to be drilling. So that's the first folder, and that's the folder that Reverberate will default to. But there is a second folder. So I'm just going to take you into this options here, and you can see that there are different places where you can navigate to go to find other impulse responses. And there's this great option here for loading user-defined locations, which you can set here, so you can find a location and hit save. And one of the things that I did straight away was to add into these user-defined locations the factory settings from Liquid Sonic. So let's go and take a look at factory folder number two. And again, there's some really nice impulse responses here. Uh, Soho in London, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second uh, film centre of the UK. We've got uh, Pinewood and Shepparton and then... In the middle of London, in an old district of London, we have over 400 post-production facilities in four streets. And most of them are in buildings uh, that are uh, higgledy piggledy. They've got all sorts of walls in the way. And often their suites are over four or five different floors, different levels in the buildings. So uh, they, and obviously they're, they're, they're renting these buildings. So they don't want to be driven. Uh, Soho in London, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second uh, film centre of the UK. We've got There's some interesting impulse responses here where you've got this room next door. And so if I now play this uh, and then London, mute the, know, the direct the sound, second, uh, film centre of the UK, we've got uh, Pinewood and Shepherd. You can see that we start to hear as though we were listening through a wall post-production facilities in four streets and most of them are in buildings but of course all these are a function of the impulse response that you load into a convolution reverb and of course you can also go and configure where your own impulse responses are so for instance i've allocated my main impulse response folder so here are all the impulse responses that I have at my disposal. So for instance, here we've got indoor swimming pool. At Soho in London, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second uh, film centre of the UK. We've got uh, Pinewood and Shepparton and then in the middle of London, in an old district of London. So there we go. There's a sense of the sorts of things that you can do. But of course, a lot of these will be determined by the impulse responses that you have access to. But the two folders that come as factory presets, as it were, uh, factory supplied impulse responses, will get you going very nicely. Now, the next thing I want to point out is that with Reverberate, you've got access to two impulse responses at the same time. So we've got impulse response one, we've got impulse response two. 
And there's lots of different things you can do by using both of these together. But the next thing I would highlight is this topography section here. At the moment, we've got it set with what Liquid Sonics describe as parallel stereo, where the left input channel, the reverb is created and put out on the left output, and similarly, the right input just goes to the right output. And of course, if you feed that with a mono signal, as I'm doing at the moment, then obviously the same signal is fed to both sides and you're effectively getting a mono to stereo. Now, one of the other options is mono to stereo. And what Liquid Sonics recommend is if you're starting to pan stuff around, that it is better to use the mono to stereo setting rather than the parallel stereo. But the other setting here is something that's really interesting. It's what they call true stereo. And what true stereo means is that the left input is sent to the convolution for both the left and the right. And similarly, the right input is sent to left and right. And so this gets a much more realistic type of reverb. The original parallel stereo is what most convolution reverb plugins will be doing. Now to get true stereo, you need to track down some proper true stereo impulse responses. And there is a set out there which come from Sampler City and they are impulse responses from the Brucasti M7. So I've again used my defined locations to be able to select that folder. And these you can see are four channels so we've got two channels for the left, because the left and right will be fed to the two channels. And then we've got two channels for the right, again, where left and right are fed. And so now we can actually set up and play true stereo convolution reverbs. Uh, Soho in London, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second... Uh... So this is really, really useful on stereo content. And so having this true stereo option where you can use two impulse responses simultaneously is really really helpful but if you don't have access to true stereo impulse responses then one of the things you can do if we go back to parallel stereo there is this simulation option to simulate the benefits of true stereo impulse responses when you don't have access to genuine true stereo impulse responses so obviously off is the simulation element is turned off. With the clear mode, a delay copy of your single impulse response is used to create clear and distinct additional reflections. And then the dense mode uses some stereo white noise in the convolution process. And what that will do is it'll create a dense set of additional reflections in the B side of the true stereo convolver. So again, lots of options going well beyond what a normal convolution reverb plugin would offer. The next thing I want to show you is the early reflection section. Because, of course, reverb is made up of two key elements. The early reflections, the distinct repeat echoes that you will hear from sound bouncing off walls that are pretty close to you, and then as the multiple paths become more and more complex, it basically merges into a reverb tail. So often the actual character of a room is determined by the early reflections rather than necessarily just the reverb tail. This early reflection section again demonstrates the point I made earlier about the reverb rate being a hybrid of convolution and algorithmic. And what the designers have done here is to enable you to actually adjust all the early reflections as if you were working with an algorithmic reverb. Uh, Soho in London, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second uh, film center of the UK. We've got to so we can adjust the size. In the middle of London, in we an can old bring of London, the we position. have 400 post-production facilities in four streets, and most of them are in buildings uh, that are uh, higgledy piggledy. They've got all sorts of walls in the way, and often their suites are over four or five different floors. Different. We can move the, the distance we are away. Obviously, they're, they're they're renting these buildings, so they don't want to be 
drilling through huge walls and, and, and investing in massive infrastructure. So if it's a case of just putting some Cat 5 through the building, then I think this is genius. So you can see there that we can do a lot of things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do in a normal convolution reverb plugin. And I do want to stress here that I'm only just touching the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do with Reverberate. And the next thing I want to show you is this envelope section. So you may well be familiar with the envelope section on a synth where we've got attack and decay. And so again, you can actually change and modify the way... At Soho in London, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second uh, film centre of the UK. We've got uh, Pinewood and Shepparton and then in the middle of London in an old district. So you can, you can actually modify the way that the impulse response is going to impact on your sound. And again, lots of scope for experimentation in this section. Each impulse response section has an EQ section and we can get hold of the EQ section and by right clicking on it we can change the type of EQ or we can do, come up here to the menu uh, so we can modify the EQ but of course there's nothing particularly new in that the thing I want to highlight here is this sheen control here and what that really does is add some extra high end but it's not done necessarily with EQ it's done as part of the algorithmic side of reverberate and it's really, really useful for lifting. If you've got a dull sounding impulse response, you can just lift that out. Uh, and that's really, really useful for handling those dull impulse responses. So the next thing I want to show you is the mixer tab. Because here we've got controls over the two impulse responses. So we could load in very different impulse responses into one and two and then be able to mix between the two. So we could, in impulse response one, load in... Uh, Soho in London, for those of you that don't know, is the sort of second uh, film centre of the UK. We've got... And then if we go into impulse response two, we could load in something very, very different. So let's go into the second folder. And let's load in something that's very clearly different. So back to the mixer window and we can now mix between those two algorithms. So if we go impulse response one. And so for those of you that don't know, it's the sort of second uh, film. And there's impulse response two. So back to number one. In the of London, in an old district of London, we have over 400 post-production facilities in four streets and most of them are in buildings uh, that are uh, higgledy piggledy they've got all sorts of walk so what we can do is is you've got a scene in a post-production where you need to do a walkthrough between two different rooms you can set up one room in impulse response one and then set up the second room in impulse response two and then you can use pro tools automation to be able to automate the mixer so we can mix between the two there's also options here to be able to use an LFO to modulate the low frequencies. So if we just go back to impulse response one, at Soho in London, for those of you that we start know, pan modding, uh, film centre of the UK, we've got uh, Pinewood and Shepparton, and then in the middle of London, in an old district of London, we have over 400 post-production facilities in four streets and most of them are in buildings. So you can start to create all sorts of spinning effects, all sorts of things. Again, loads more than you can do in a normal convolution reverb plugin. So in conclusion, I have to say this is an incredibly powerful plugin that's way more than just a normal convolution reverb. The level and breadth of the adjustments is enormous, and I've just only touch the tip of the iceberg in this show and tell review so i really do commend taking a look at reverberate seeing what it can do certainly for people who need lots of sound design being able to manipulate sounds in very complex ways this is an incredibly powerful plugin and especially when you consider the price it really becomes a no-brainer see you again soon